Hey guys, in my previous video I talked about how to write a PhD research proposal but then I realized that without a good research topic or a good research and question in the first place there is no point in teaching how to write a proposal because if your topic is not strong enough, if your questions are not well and um, fine-tuned then what's the point writing a, um, a research proposal? So today I thought it's wise to um, give you my three um, top tips on how to come up with a creative, a top-notch research um, topic. So let's go straight, straight into it without any delay. And tip number one, try to think about um, something um, counterintuitive. In other words, try to swim against the current. There is always this temptation to just confirm what we know already. So we'll go to our comfort zone or our safe zone when it comes to choosing a topic for our research. So why not do something edgy, something daring, something a little bit outlandish? These outlandish topics most times attract more attention than the normal everyday topic. So what's the point telling me that water is wet? We already know that already. So why spend three, four, five years researching a topic whose um, results we already know? Why not do something a little bit edgy, counterintuitive and then um, you, 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 might, you might just attract that attention. For instance, a popular um, political scientist and a very good friend of mine um, released a paper a few, few weeks ago and the paper argued that um, anti-corruption campaigns, instead of um, limiting the incidences of bribery, actually um, increases the, the incidences of um, bribery. And this is quite counterintuitive because we believe that anti-corruption campaigns are meant to sensitize people against them um, giving bribes. But um, unfortunately, we discovered that anti-corruption campaigns actually amplify um, bribe giving and bribe and taking. And it defended this position with a lot of data. And he found out that because of the messaging of um, anti-corruption campaigns, um, people are left with this um, defeatist um, mentality that corruption is already widespread. Corruption is as, as um, eating deep into the fiber of um, the society. So there's no point fighting against it. The best thing to do, the, the wise thing to do is to, is to jump on the bad wagon and then that's what he discovered. And I think topics like this provoke our general understanding of the concept and challenge us to think deeply about the um, concept and the methodologies we use in um, actualizing them. Another example is this um, COVID-19, for instance. COVID-19 has um, inspired several um, academic researches and academic journals, and this is this is um, this is normal. I, I actually, I'll be even um, um, confused and or disappointed if writers or academics are not writing about the COVID-19. But if you notice um, most of the works coming out of um, COVID-19, they're mostly negatives. How COVID-19 has um, negatively affected the economy. Um, education, relationships and things like that. So the best thing to do to stand out in this kind of topic is to go contrary to what other people are saying. Not in opposition necessarily, but instead of dwelling on the negatives, why not go to the positives instead? Has COVID-19 achieved anything positive? Or is there any positive externality of COVID-19? We know it's a pandemic, we know it's destructive. So telling us how it has affected the economy, it has affected education, is good enough but it won't stand you out among the crowd. So is there any positive benefit that I can see of COVID-19? For instance, in the European Union, there were several internal squabbles before COVID-19, but then COVID-19 um, served as the unifying factor, so to say, and brought um, strong European powers together to actually agree on a, on a deal to save the Union. So you could argue that COVID-19 led to the reunification of the European Union. So a very smart or industrious um, scholar might also look at other pandemics and see the unifying factors that these um, pandemics have, um, have provoked. So instead of going with the general flow of the negatives of COVID-19, you could just search around and see something edgy and um, swim against the current as I said um, initially. And uh, the second point I'll try to I'm trying to communicate today is um, also try to look for different fields. There's a relationship between different fields. For instance, you have something like um, artificial intelligence. 
This is already well spoken about. There are several research on the impacts of artificial intelligence on society. But there's another topic like um, gender relations, for instance. There are also several topics about gender relations. Why not bring them together instead? There are several um, researches here, several researches here, but you hardly get communication between these different fields. Why not bring two topical issues together and show their complicated relationship? For instance, the impact of um, artificial intelligence on gender relations. That is bound to get attention because you're talking about two big issues and trying to look for a relationship, a correlation, or whatever you call it, between them. Another thing is like, Climate change. Climate change is a very big issue and um, people have written thousands on it. So how do you stand out? You can combine climate change and something else. Climate change and racial relations, for instance. So racial relations is another big issue. Climate change is another big issue. Why not bring them together and find the relationship between both of them? That is one of the, the, one of the important ways to, to get attention and to come up with a top-notch um, research topic. So I know there are different... We are from different backgrounds, different disciplines, but there are topical issues in these disciplines. And instead of taking the, the popular route, as I said earlier, look for combinations, interesting combinations. Try to play around and be creative in your topics. Try to combine several things and you'll be surprised um, about what you might come up with. And the third is the methodology. There are different methodological um, implications for the work we do. And most times our results as good as the methodology we used in um, achieving them in the first place. And you could come up with more creative ways of um, arriving at our results. For instance, what they call this um, randomized control trials. Before, randomized control trials or RCTs were exclusively used um, in practical sciences or medical sciences. And for those who do not know the meaning of a randomized control trial, it says when you create um, two groups of people, and you give the drug to one group and you give the sugar pill or the placebo to the other group and after some months or years depending on how long the research will take you compare both groups and see whether the drug is uh, effective or not so this was only used in practical sciences but about two decades ago someone snatched this method from practical sciences and started utilizing it in social sciences now, RCTs are the major techniques used in measuring development projects, policy effectiveness, and things like that. So you could also come up, you could also come up with, um, with interesting ways of, um, of, of addressing issues, methodologies of um, achieving results. So instead of going through the already laid down path, it's a PhD after all, and I want to see innovation. So you could come up with something innovative and defend why this uh, method is innovative. And above all, make sure that anything you come up with is backed up with data. At least you have preliminary data supporting your stand. So even though I'm um, inviting you to be outlandish, to be edgy and um, swim against the current, make sure you're not just making bold claims without, um, without any substance beneath. So whatever topic you come up with, try to look for data already to support it, even in your proposal. So even if we do not have the full picture for now. Show that there's at least there's a little bit of meat in this in this topic. And brainstorming might require you coming up with five, six, seven, or ten topics. And out of these ten, probably seven of them might be rubbish. But one, two, or three topics that you come up with these combinations or this swimming against the current and technique, you might just come up with something that might just be the deal breaker in that your field. So, guys, it's a short one about how to find edgy and um, top-notch research topics in your area of interest so instead of just following the crowd and confirming what we know already and telling us that water is wet why not come up with something innovative and with these um, tricks i've told you about first swim against the current the second one look for the combination of different topical issues and third one think of um, methodological innovations in your field i think with this you will be preparing yourself to come up with that groundbreaking research um, topic that everybody wants to meet, every supervisor wants to supervise. So that's it guys, I'll see you on the next one. Stay inspired, continue to watch my channel, I have several videos here already on personal statements, on recommendation letters, on um, standardized tests, on several matters regarding international scholarships. So if you're interested in issues like this, kindly subscribe to this channel and leave me a comment 
leave me a like and tell me what you think about this um, issue of looking for um, a research topic. So until next time, stay inspired guys. See you later.